have you ever been inside an editor's head? Where there are all of these thoughts going on at the same time driving you crazy? Well, I have. And the way to make this work is by using markers when editing. All right, all right, all right. So markers are generally used in order to help you pinpoint specific parts of your project and they actually help you easily and quickly navigate within your project. And what's even more exciting is that you can have notes for the markers that you put on your timeline. Let me show you. So here we are inside Final Cut Pro and here is our timeline. Now let's say that on this specific bit, I want to add a marker. I click M on my keyboard and there you go, here it is. Now, if I double click M on my computer, I'm gonna get this. And here you can choose the type of marker that you want and you can also add your notes. But let's take things from the beginning. So this purple marker that you see right here and that you get when you click M on your keyboard is what is called the standard marker. The standard marker can be used for anything really, for anything that you want to pinpoint on your project. I personally use these purple standard markers in order to sync clips, for example. They help me find, for example, the exact point where my subject starts talking and this way I can synchronize it with the audio that it's a different file. But this is entirely up to you. I mean, you can use it, as I said, for anything really. Now, the second option that you have is the to-do marker, which is this one. So if you click on it, you see that the marker on the timeline becomes red and it is red because on your timeline you will see that the red pops out so much there is no chance that you're going to miss this. So it's a very good feature to use when you need to remind something to your future self. For example, I might want to add a title later on at this specific part of my project, but this is not the right time to do it right now. I'm still working on my first draft. It's very roughly edited, so it's not time to work on details and titles and stuff like that. So I want just to put a marker and say add title and hit done and there it is so i can see this red marker on my timeline and if i double click on it i see the note that i have created now the great thing with the to-do markers is that when you complete your task you can click on this box right here tick it and your marker is now completed that means that the color changes and as you can see it becomes green done so the marker still remains on the timeline, but now it looks like it's a task that's been completed. I also use the to-do marker a lot uh, because I collaborate with other editors. So when I want to leave some notes and say, hey, please remember to do this uh, at this point or remember to, I don't know, fix the audio here or, you know, I just leave all these little red pinpoints on my timeline and so they can see and they cannot miss any of my notes which is amazing so i want to put a marker here i double click m to get the dialogue window over here and i choose the third option which is the chapter and i get this symbol on my timeline now i can name my chapter the way i like for example i can say okay uh, my chapter here is um, I don't know, lighting, let's say. So I hit done and now I have a chapter marked on my timeline. I can also take this pin right here and drag it to the end of my chapter. So I can say, for example, that the end of my chapter is here. Regarding this orange line that you can see right here, it actually goes away if you start working on your timeline again. But if you want to go back at any point and see where is the ending of your chapter, you can always click on the orange marker and the ending of your chapter appears again on the timeline. The most common reason to use the chapters is uh, when you want to burn a DVD so that when somebody watches the DVD afterwards can see the chapters of your movie, let's say, for example. Personally, I use them for different reasons as well. I find them very useful when I edit long interview videos and I use them if I want to, let's say, structure 
the interview and be able to follow the train of thought of the interviewee. So I basically make chapters saying, okay, here uh, she talks about this subject. Next chapter, she talks about that other topic and so on and so forth. So I end up having quite a few chapters and then I decide what needs to be cut out and what needs to stay. Another reason that I use chapters quite often is when I want to upload a video on YouTube and it's a pretty long one and you actually need to have timestamps instead of spending 40 minutes watching the video again in order to find out what timestamps you want to create for YouTube you do that before you export your video, you put chapters and when you export it and open it with QuickTime, you can have access to the chapters and you can create them so much faster without the need to spend, I don't know, let's say 40 minutes watching this long video again. Now let's say that you have misplaced a marker. In order to change the position of it, you just need to right click on it and you get this menu. So you have options like cut, copy, modify. You can cut it, find on your timeline the right position for your market and just click command V on your keyboard. And now the marker is on the right position. Now another interesting thing that you need to know when it comes to markers is that you can easily navigate from marker to marker on your project without spending a lot of time. So the best way to navigate between markers is by clicking control and apostrophe on your keyboard and this way you move forward to the next marker on your timeline. Now if you want to go back and do the opposite and go to the previous marker on your timeline, you click control and semicolon and you move backwards to your previous marker on your timeline. Lastly, I want to say that you can also access your markers by clicking on your index right here. So if you click on tags, you can see this list that includes also all the markers that you have on your timeline, whether they are to-do markers, whether they are standard or chapters. But there's also a way to see only the type of markers that you want. So if you want to see only your standard markers, you can click on this icon right here. If you want to see your chapter markers, you can click on this icon right here. And if you want to see your to-do markers on the index, you can see separately the ones that they are already completed and the ones that they are supposed to be done. So we have the to-do markers right here. You click on this icon. And if you want to see the ones that you have already completed, you click on this icon right here. Well, this is it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something useful for today. And I really hope that you're gonna start editing with markers from now on. So if you like the video, don't forget to hit a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.